Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about our soul journey through path of grief, of loss, of change in our life, of opening to evolution, to more experiences, and also to be able to find ourselves in the year, how are we evolving as humans? How are we bringing more expanded consciousness into our awareness? And how is our soul and spirit now guiding each and every moment in which we are making choices, in which we are engaging in the world around us, and every breath we are taking? It truly is a totally different experience in this year that we've come through over past many decades. If you look back on the 70s and 80s, you would think that if we ever had this conversation then, oh my goodness, you know, there's a place at the top of the hill and we'll find you a room there. Because people just were (laughs) not even open to this at all. They couldn't even understand it. It scared them and they were definitely saying, but I have to know who I am, and we're going to be talking about today is to expand even further from knowing who you are and controlling that facade to expanding and saying what is out there and how can I be so much more. Today my guest is Dr. Carolee Barker. Her book is Nightlight, My Soul Calling, Body Listening, and Heart Speaking. Dr. Kara, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Dr. Jeanette. I, I'm very, uh, I'm very blessed. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you on the show today because I think that so many people are saying, um, "Did we just go through the washing machine?" And uh, what happened to us in the past few years? Because we don't even recognize ourselves, our goals, or that what we believed in. Do you think perhaps that this is starting to be the crack of the awakening for many? I do, because, you know, if we wanted a concrete evidence, we'd just look around at the structures. They're all crumbling everywhere yes. around the world. Yeah. So yeah. if that's crumbling, <laughs> so is our facade. Yes. And it's so interesting you said that because, you know, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I have. I would bring food home from the store, and I would say within two days, it's done. It's overcooked, and it's rotted. And I'm going, that is really weird. You know, we used to go yeah. to the store, and we get a few days, you know, to sit on the counter uh-huh. or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's even as we are evolving and becoming higher frequency beings, so is nature. It can't hold on to the old mm-hmm. ways of being mm-hmm. the structure of the apple that sits on the counter. It now says, hey, you better pick me closer to the tree because there's no way I can hold on, right? <laughs> That's right. And it's funny you said the tree. Because the tree, symbolically, is the great mother. And the great mother is that which is that inner guidance, you know, that's deep yeah. inside us in in the, the wee small voice. It's all there. So there's that apple on the counter. No, it's being true mm-hmm. to its nature. And if you look at it, the tree being the mother figure, as you shared your story in the book, the mothers are also saying, I can't hold on to you forever. Mm -hmm. I can't Mm -hmm. hold on to you for decades. I can't control and be able to be in your life and overlay in your energy field much longer. And aren't we finding that just as the trees are sucking their energy back in for survival, so to our mothers finding that happening, you know, like where their kids are, are getting in trouble at a very young age, where they're leaving mm-hmm. home much earlier, where they're moving very far away and you don't see them again for a while, or they mm-hmm. pass on much too early. 
do you think we're seeing these paradigms much more now? I don't know if it's happening more, but I think we're observing it more. Mm-hmm. I think that our perspective has widened from all the uh, crumbling. And so we're, we see things more clearly. I certainly see this with mothers. I mean, I see it with myself, with my daughter, um, with uh, my son who died, with my granddaughter. It's just things are, you know, if you think of a theater in the round, you know, you've been to the theater where it's in the round and the stage Mm -hmm. rotates. I think at one point, maybe we see mothering one point at one uh, center stage, but then over time the wheel starts to turn. And now other things are on the stage too. And other ways of being are on the stage. And hopefully we, we accept that and go, you know, with grace and go with it instead of fighting it. Yes, because I think sometimes, though, when you're a mother, it really becomes your identity. It is your Mm -hmm. wetsuit. It is Mm -hmm. all of the badges that you wear. And it is how you are found in this world. Yet when we start to have these events in our life, we find that our identity or how we are found, we begin to feel lost, perhaps. Yes, yes, yes. And we don't want to admit it. The ego doesn't want to admit that it, that the person is lost, that I'm lost or that you're lost. It doesn't want to. It has a vested interest in appearing on top of things. And so yeah. that's where fake it till you make it comes in. Yeah, I could never understand that thing. <laughs> you know, and, mm-hmm. and then also, too, we think about it. In essence, it's the best thing ever when you say to the ego, sorry, see you later. I don't Mm -hmm. know about you, but I've gone through this pattern several times in my life where I said, I don't even attach to my name or to my identity of my lineage. It doesn't even show up. I almost feel as if more connected to just being that soul and spirit. So I think sometimes when people say, but... I lost that job, and I'm not that anymore. But, wow, I feel freer to be able to see what else is out there. Or when a child leaves, and you'll say, you feel different so that you have to find yourself now because you're not a mother, you're now the person or the essence. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. a lot of these different transitions in our life, we don't even recognize that they are going on. I, I have a, a very dear friend whose daughter is has graduated from ma- grad school and all that, and is a lovely young woman, and she has a boyfriend and is getting very serious. And the mother said to me, the mother is 72, she said to me, I just feel guilty. I feel bereft. You know, her attention is on her boyfriend and on her future in-laws, and I understand it, but I just feel sad. And I said, well... Lean into it, because it'll bring something mm-hmm. else out of it. You just have to lean into it. It, it is a loss, but you yeah. also know it's it's very appropriate for your daughter. So, and you don't want to hold her back, and she doesn't. So, mm-hmm. just it's what we go through. It's another form of empty nest. Yeah, part of our yeah. humanness. Well, I think also too, Doctor Kara, your book Nightlight is a wonderful example. Of every single page is a page turner. I almost call this as a journal kind of idea where people mm-hmm. can open it up to any page, find something and read it for that day. It might be something to inspire them, might be something to shift their consciousness or maybe something to even laugh into or maybe something to cry with. And that's what we're, we're really needing today. Instead of being spoken at, told this is how you do it, follow this mm-hmm. path and stay within the lines, We really just Mm -hmm. want to hear for a moment a different tune, a different tone to our thoughts Mm. and our mind, do you think? Mm. Oh, that's exactly why I wrote it. I didn't want anything that was theoretical. I wanted to be um, for humanity. And actually, it's funny that you said that first thing in the morning because I've had several readers that I don't even know uh, correspond with me and say, "I've, I've I've replaced all my other books on my bedside table. 
the first thing I do in the morning is I just flip it open to whatever page, which reminds right. me of the I Ching. You know, I go, hey, however you're using it, I've had people say, oh, I'm rereading it now for the third time. And I've actually had people say, I'm, I've got note cards out. I'm writing things down because I yeah. need to remember this. I said, well, really, all that you need, you don't need my words. It's going inside in quietude and finding your own. Yeah. We all have a different path. Unless we can share with others what it feels like to fly, what it feels like to sprout your wings, what it feels like to live in a different paradigm, what it feels like to come and um, navigate your life through your heart and your soul instead of your mind and your outcomes, Mm -hmm. unless Mm -hmm. that is shared, many others are very new to the conversation. So I can understand about the note cards because they're trying to pick up a different language, Mm -hmm. so to speak, Mm -hmm. you know. And then Mm -hmm. eventually those will just fall to the wayside and they'll create their own new language. I think in the year 23 and 24, we'll be coming up with new languages where people will say, I don't even need to speak as much. And a lot of this social media and all these other things are going to start going away because we want to feel instead Mm -hmm. of hearing, right? Yeah, we want to feel our way in to the heart and what's landing in the heart. Um, And and I I do agree with you. I think it is going to be more and more prevalent, you know, as we find... Um, you call it the, um, what's the skin, the diving skin, the uh, wetsuit. The wetsuit. The wetsuit. I think mm-hmm. as people realize, wait a minute, <laughs> there are serious cracks in my wetsuit, and I'm getting flooded. So I yeah. need to get out of this thing and find yeah. other ways. Uh, and and for me, Dr. Jeanette, it's, you know, as we attend to that, which is the basic task of life, then we are guided to our contribution. And that contribution must be shared. It's like when I was 70, I had a retrospective art show. And as an artist, visual and written, until it's shared, it's not alive. Right. It takes right. the exchange, like what you're doing with your radio show. You're right. bringing that alive. Yes, and I think also to the idea is, is that to exchange energy... Actually, what I call, it delights the particles. You know, I've had so many advanced (laughs) physics. I've had so many quantum advanced physics classes. Sometimes, you know, I begin to wonder myself. (coughs) I even had this theory one day. I mean, one day I was trying to get out of this bathtub. It was a new one, and there wasn't enough clearance on the side, and I had already let the water out, and I said, oh, my gosh, I don't have a way to get out. And then I said, fill it back up. Pour in the Epsom salts, salt water will give me a rise, and then I will float, Uh and it will change the chemistry Uh of my body. And I had had this whole entire physics thing all worked out (laughs) in my head. (laughs) And I said, (laughs) right, and I said, that's how it's going to work. And it worked perfectly. So it's so Mm -hmm. funny. I think that um, if we can just allow ourselves to laugh and enjoy, that's where it brings us joy then we are able to see other things start to light up around us. I think sometimes when we say, but, should, struggle, trouble, trauma, and use all those words, I almost liken those words to the door stoppers and the things that keep flopping back in your face. You know when you go to try to get outside a screen door and it flops back in, you can't get out fast Mm -hmm. enough? Mm -hmm. So I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people are trying to escape the cracks, but... Their old ways just keep meeting them with resistance. Yeah, so and harder and that, harder smacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we're coming to what I call awareness. If we can share our stories, it's almost as if we're sucking the people out of the out of the things and saying, come on, I'll, I'll bring you out. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. And, you know, I love the, the image of you in the bathtub. I really love that. That's inspired because I think, you know, all, you know, you got the four categories. We're all yeah. in the bathtub, and the water's going out. We're going, oh no, how do yes. I get out of this? But you said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You pause. Yep. And you had an inspiration, and you yep. did it. You acted on it, and it worked. That's right. 
We're yep. all in the bathtub, baby. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love and, that. And, you, and for people who think that they t- if they took a physics course 50 years ago that it didn't matter, but it does. I'll never forget that my physics teacher, the first day we went into class, he was in there, and on the left-hand side of the board, all the way across the front and all the way down the other side, were all of these letters and symbols, and at the bottom and the right was a number. And he says, Do you, does anyone know what I just did out there? And we're all going like, no way, right? And mm-hmm. I'll never forget it. And I'll think, you know what? He put me into that realm of possibility. Mm-hmm. That realm of possibility that there is so much more out there. When you start talking about quarks and electrons and, and quantum stuff, and you say, is our body an illusion or is it just density? Mm-hmm. You come into a whole other conversation where people are going, oh, wait a minute, step back. But once you make the leap and you say you're in possibility, then none of those things need to have a definition. You know. So I think sometimes people will say, I'm hearing what you're saying on a spiritual or a paranormal or a science or a conceptual or a religious or whatever it is kind of idea, but I don't understand it. And the answer is you don't need to understand it. Mm -hmm. You have to Mm -hmm. let it flow through, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because the Epsom salts are right there. Yeah. And they're going to help you get out of that bathtub of not understanding. You don't need to. Right. You need to stop striving and start following that mm-hmm. soulful guidance that is impeccable in its wisdom. We don't need to figure it out. Yeah. That's shocking that, to the Western mind. That you know, is I that think, is so vitally think, important. Yeah, I think therefore I am. I think of it more like um I am, therefore I create. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. about thinking, but we think it is. There. Yeah. Think. Think, think, think. Well, I think because when people use those words, it's also, too, about control. I can control my mm-hmm. thoughts. I won't do mm, good or bad. I'll good. do good or bad. Or I'll do left or right. Or I'll make sure that it is um, showing up as. Or I can be part of that tribe. So, really, a lot of those words, the, their inference is, I will be in control of how I am presenting in this world. When in essence, my goodness, um, how how much freer can you be if you don't have those labels? I mean, I live in New Orleans. At any second, you know, you could walk down the street and say, you know what? I even said to my husband one day, I said, you know what? I think we need to go out to eat. And he'll say, okay, well, you know, blah, 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 and I'm not, I don't listen to him because he was in the other room. But um, <laughs> I, I just said, I want to go out to eat to this restaurant, and I want to go down to the French Quarter, and I want to wear a sequins gown. And I want us to mm-hmm. go at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. And he said, what? <laughs> and I said, I but you, because in this town you can truly do anything at any time, and people mm-hmm. would not think twice. All you have to just say is, I was just at a wedding, they don't care, you know. It means Mm -hmm. nothing to them. But your experience, if you can create it and have the freedom and the space to create it, can change your world. Just as you shared in your book, you know, about after your son had died, you were within confines of how you were to appear, how you were going to show up to other people. Mm-hmm. how you were going to go through your process, and there was no way out of that box, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. And yet, the box or the label, I am a bereaved mother. I mean, yes. factually it's true, but that is too small a box. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> let's bring it up to this minute Yeah. in the realm of possibilities. And then life gets more fun. Dare I say mm-hmm. fun? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, here in New Orleans, we when, you know, someone transitions, we celebrate life. We don't celebrate their death. It has mm-hmm. always been that way. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when I was working with patients with end of life, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, the ambulance will bring you home from the hospital, and you'll spend an hour before you transition you know, having mm-hmm. a having a birthday party with a house full of balloons and cake and ice cream, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and the joyous music and everything. That's how you exit. 
Or still others can say, I would like to just be at very peace, quiet, sitting in mm-hmm. the moment with nothing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think the idea is can we be free to find our voice, just as you share in your book about finding your voice. What is your voice? Is your voice using words of the old structures or is your voice using energy and the sound from within to speak? Oh, I like that so much. You're reminding me of my bachelor uncle, Uncle Uno, who died um, a long time ago. He was he was 86. He was on top of his double wide trailer in Flint, Michigan, in the winter, and he had a heart attack and died there. Okay, this was the this was the uncle that never used a personal pronoun. He he would stay at each of our houses for maybe a couple of years and sit at the dinner table and maybe not say one sentence. He would start with the verb, if he spoke mm-hmm. at all. So now it's his funeral, right? And the the minister didn't know him and didn't even mention his name. So afterwards, the cousins and, and I, um, we, we went to have a, a, a bit to eat and what we realized was what he was doing all his life, <clears throat> excuse me, he was taking photographs. He had so many photographs. He actually was the family historian without a word. He wow. did it all through pictures. Mm-hmm. And that really was a, a wake-up call for me. Some people use literal words. Some people use paint. Some people use dance. You know, somebody asked Martha Graham, toward the end of her life, well, what did that dance mean? And she said, if I'd known, I wouldn't have had to dance it. Yeah. You know, we all have a different, let's say, language, so to speak. Yeah, you know. You're a wordsmith. It's so important that you said that, you know, because, of of course, I'm a medium, too, and I always pray before the show that whatever needs to come through, so maybe that was your message for you. (laughs) about, you know, being able to bring these messages through. You know what I think is so important, Mm -hmm. too? What is creativity? What is new experience about if you've never seen it before? I had spoken to someone the other day. I was going to the craft store because I wanted to get something to do a few crafts with my grandkids over the weekend. And they didn't have exactly what I was looking for, and I've always done crafts my whole life, so... Um, and I said, this is what I'm trying to think of. What would I use in replacement? And the person that was with me says, I have no idea. And I said, did you ever do crafts? And they said, never. 70 years old, and they never did crafts. And I said, did you ever do anything? Did you paint? Did you draw? Did you color? They said, I painted by numbers. And do you know what that told me right there? Mm -hmm. Staying in the safe confines of what you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And you just, yeah, no. oh. you want to step back because when people are in that space and time, you and I could be very um, taunting or triggering to these people. So it's important oh, yeah. for us to understand there are many people in many different places in the world, and we're just showing you it from our vantage point. But yeah. understand wherever you are, is where you can open up from too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny you said painting by numbers and craft stores. I've I've drawn and painted and made things all my life too. And <clears throat> somebody gave me a paint by numbers kit when I was a little girl. I couldn't do it because I couldn't make myself stay within those lines. Yeah. I just couldn't. It's like, but what about shadowing? And what about... <laughs> well, Okay, I don't think I even finished that painting because it wasn't, it wasn't my painting. Let's put it that way. It wasn't yeah. my painting. It was predetermined, and maybe that's part of the wetsuit. You know, when we climb yeah. into it, into a predetermined paint-by-number thing, this is how you should live your life. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do in schooling. This is what you need to do in a marriage. This is what you need to do as a mother and a grandmother, blah, 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 blah. But it's somebody else's paint by numbers. It's not ours. How do we find ours and stay true to it? Yeah. 
let's talk about that for a second because when you have a loss of a child very young uh, young age in your life and the, you're the mother and you're still here <laughs> generally many mothers will say I didn't get to see them out of a wedding or to have grandchildren or to have this or to have that or whatever and I think when you step back several decades later you could say that was my perception putting on them they lived their life fully that was mm-hmm. just the end of their life. Mm-hmm. In other words, mm-hmm. we sometimes say, you know, and put all these things like, oh, there will never be another Christmas or whatever. That's our loss we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We aren't talking mm-hmm. about right. theirs. We're talking about our regrets or our shame or our mm-hmm. guilt or our misgivings or whatever you might want to call it. And that's a very important um, awareness to come to. Do you believe? I do. Because I went through what you described. I went through, oh, it's Easter in two days and he's not here. Or, oh, it's his birthday. What do we do about that? Do I count that birthday? Do I not? You know, even when somebody says, how many children do you have? Believe it or not, that's a difficult question. When you've lost a child, do I count him? Do I not count him? If I don't count him, is that a betrayal? So finally it was, I looked at, well, you read the book, so I looked at, you know, I had almost 19 bonus years because he almost died at birth. So Mm -hmm. I started to think about what I did have, what I did get to experience, and and it helped me know, you know, he's on his own path. Plus, I had three dreams of his death before he was killed. So I knew it was his time. I didn't feel like it was my time to lose him, and yet I knew it was. Because right. something else would be asked, and very frankly, and I really think you're going to understand this, Doctor Jeanette. He's always with me. That's right. In fact, in fact, one time after his death, in a dream, he said to me, "Mama, every time you think of us, i.e., those who who have died, every time you think of us, we're closer than your eyelashes. But it's hard to hug without a body. Just know we're with you." And that really changed my journey. Like, oh, yeah, that piece here right now while I'm talking to you and laughing. You had a great sense of humor. You know, it's just like, just enjoy the moment. Enjoy the day. Yeah. And, you know, that's so vitally important. You know, my son, who's in his mid-30s now, he tried mm-hmm. to commit suicide 13 times. And um, every did. single time, you know, I always knew it because he and I were – exclusively connected he came Mm -hmm. back to me twice in this lifetime so i we were very tightly connected and and that sense of knowing and i had even said to him you know at the the last one i said invite fear in and ask fear sit in a white room with your uh, you know counselor and nothing else and just Mm -hmm. invite fear in and Mm -hmm. don't leave there for eight hours and Mm -hmm. see what you come up with and then eventually, he, you know, he had phased out of that and had his infinity t- closed, his karmic circle closed. And now he works with other kids to be able to help them find the value of oh. life, even if they're oh. in gang members. But here's the, the most important part about that is that we have to pay attention to our intuition. And mm-hmm. we have to be freeing and know that we can all transition at any moment in time. So I know... He might never live to be 100. I might never live to be 100. But he and I are like, hey, man, are you still here today? I'm like, yeah, I'm still Mm -hmm. here today. And Mm -hmm. it's ease. And it's once you start getting into that path and you aren't afraid of death or if you aren't afraid of moving through it, time, it makes your day-to-days so different. Mm -hmm. You just don't have that strife always having tried to, like, check things off on a box or a bucket list or to do, it doesn't even show up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Perhaps. You know, well, I've noticed you brought up a a memory for me um, from Army nursing but also oncology nursing. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, and now I I do sit with the dying as you do, so I know what a supreme blessing that is. But I've noticed that the people who have a hard time, the hardest time, letting go in their death have not have so many regrets. I wish I would have. 
I sh- I wish I sh- I didn't do that. Da, 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 da. Right. You know, they did. They regretted not really living, but the ones that passed with grace are the ones that felt complete. They did use the illusion of time. They did use what they had here to, well, to do the two things that I learned with people who then clinically did when I was working with um, Elizabeth Kubler Ross. They mm-hmm. said. That And I was expecting them to say, oh, they saw the light and they saw the tunnel and all that. But often they didn't. They said they were asked two questions. And the two questions were, how did you love and receive love? And secondly, how did you serve? Now, Mm -hmm. I I short-ended that and I said, okay, how did I love and serve love? That would be my final quiz. Right. And it's so it's right now. Yeah. You know, how can how can I love and serve you? You. Right. Dr. Jeanette well, yeah. and the people you know who are listening. You know what also, too, I think that a lot of people get stuck with the par- stories of other people than when they've transitioned. Um, myself, you know, I've had so many near-death experiences. I can tell you all different versions of all different things. And then you you can you can use your judgment because that's what humans do. But mm-hmm. what I can say, too, is that I don't have that sense of anything. It's just different. Mm-hmm. Like when my son had tried mm-hmm. the last time, um, you know, when he was having seizures and he was uh, dying and stuff, and I just, I would just say, okay, I'm going to go take his soul. We're going to go up to heaven in the other plane, and we're going to check things out. And we were sitting at a table and talking and stuff like that. And it's mm-hmm. just as simple as that. And then just mm-hmm. say, okay, do you want to go back? And he says, yeah, well, I think I'll go back for a little while. So I know he's only here for a, a short period of time. And I said, okay, mm-hmm. so you know where I am. And, you know, I'll call mm-hmm. him up and I'll say, I'll text him and I'll say, hey, 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 you know, can you, why don't you give me a call when you're on the way to the grocery store? As soon as he gets a text, he's like, how did you know I was on the grocery store? And I'm like, yeah, uh uh-huh, mm-hmm. sure. I do mm-hmm. because... I think once you get into this practice of learning and, and being guided by your soul and your spirit and your intuition, your openness and your expanded consciousness, you're in a different plane where you're engaging with all others around you, mm-hmm. and you don't need the words. You don't have to have reasons why. You're just mm-hmm. there. And that's, right. that's important, right? It's everything. Mm-hmm. It's really everything. And it takes away the labels, and it takes away the judgments. Of course, there will always be judgments, you know, because we are human. But it, it just, it's like a veil. To me, a veil comes down, I step through, and I see things from a different place. I perceive from a different place. And it's freer. It's literally lighter. It's literally light. And all's well. As well, you know. I, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. You think? Do you think perhaps sometimes though people get um, concerned because they'll say, "Well, um, I didn't have that experience that everyone's been talking about, so I must have done it wrong," <laughs> or "I didn't have that experience exactly like that, so I guess I have to go back and try it again," or "I didn't have that experience." So I, I'm just going to call myself a failure. A lot of people do that. And that, they right. kind of like get to the threshold of peeking through the cracks, but my crack might have everything like I'm out hanging out like uh, space junk in the cosmos, you know. Yours mm-hmm. might be that you're out in a field. Another person's might mm-hmm. be that they're swimming around in uh, uh, the ocean. Or another might be, hey, they're a pot of spaghetti sauce, whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. But we all tend to judge that which that we see through a human filter. I mean, I can't wait till the human filters go away, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, I did a, a lot of funeral. Uh, last week of a wonderful man who was 80. He had just turned 80, and he died um, in the end of May, but the family decided to do the celebration of life uh, in the autumn. So 
he had been he was pronounced clinically dead three times. The last time he was in a grocery store and he had a massive heart attack and at that moment an ER doctor walked into the grocery store and in the next aisle there was a first responder. So mm-hmm. he's he's had an amazing life. But he he has said to me over there, Kara, I don't see the light. I don't see the tunnel. Well, what do you see, see Clark? I see black. I just see black. So right. you know this one. This has gone on for years. So the last time, and he, and, he, and he knew he was dying. He said, "But what if I just see black?" I said, "Well, who's got the light switch?" Mm-hmm. He goes, "Oh, oh, that would be me." <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and you were traumatized as a little boy. Your mother brought you to a church where they spoke in tongues, and and he, I think he was about four, three and four. And they'd all lay their hands on him and do their thing. It scared the bejesus out of him. So religion and him were not were not friends. But the spiritual in him, he had forgotten about. Right. And then he remembered it. In the last 24 hours of his life, he remembered it. He smiled nonstop. I've never seen a person smile that much nonstop. He was just filled with light and joy and everything's already all right. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to undo. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, that is such a unique place to be. I think mm-hmm. uh, my kids had said to me one day, they said, well, you know, every time we call, you don't have much to say. I'll say, isn't that absolutely fabulous? I have no <laughs> drama to spew. Uh-huh. I have no, uh-huh. I have no um, uh, struggles to report. I have nothing that you need yeah. to fix. I'm just here. And they're okay. like, oh, okay then. <laughs> you know? they, don't have, they don't have many friends with mothers who would have that response, but good for you. It sets your children free, doesn't it? It gives yeah. them a much longer leash. I'm yeah. convinced. Yeah, and I think also, too, the idea is that when you have, if you yourself as mother or tree is um, very intuitive or psychic or has some sort of abilities in some way and you're starting to open up, you better believe that the leaves know about it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, or the apples mm-hmm. know about it. So if you, if you don't mm-hmm. think that it's not being passed through somehow to your kids, well, good luck <laughs> with that story. But yeah. they may have some other form of ability. It's just that the same as yours, and but there exactly. is awareness, you know, there. It, it's absolutely true. And so can we – I caught – I was at a, a art fair. Oh, I wish you lived next door to me because I'd show you these paintings <laughs> – in batik, and it's the whole cycle of life about right. the soul coming in, and the and the uh, halfway through, it's the mother, and she's letting go, and the child flies into its own life. It's so exquisite, and that's it. You know, when to hold on, when to let go, or when to have a loose hold, a very yeah. loose, kind of like a cuddle, but not suffocating. Just. Just so, the just so amount, like with well, you your know, son. It's so interesting. Like when when I remember naming my kids, um, I would step back. Didn't know why I named them that. Like, and I would step back and I said, Ah, you were named after King James. So mm-hmm. I had picked up that his soul has a past life as King James. Mm-hmm. Another one had a different thing. Another had a different, each child had a different one. And then with the grandkids, when, before my kids told me their names, I said, don't tell me their names. And I would say, this child is wisdom. This child mm-hmm. is magic. This child is joy. Mm-hmm. And this child is mischief. Right. And that's their names <laughs> for me. Because mm-hmm. I don't even, and you know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I, even when my kids were little and, you know, I'd go to, to tell them something, I'd say, I would mm-hmm. run through all of the names before mm-hmm. I, if I was yelling at them. I was running through all the mm-hmm. names and oh, I would yeah. just say, hey, you, stop. Yeah. <laughs> just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. and they're like, well, you couldn't even remember my name. I said, because it did their names did not resonate with me, but their stories of where they had been before or their feelings or their essence of who they were did. You see, so I think that 
a perfect example of how human constructs can really become very limiting. It, it, it's true. May I just offer something to you? Mm-hmm. I'm so struck with your awareness, with your heart, and your son who's been troubled. And I'm thinking, how brilliant that his soul could choose you for a mom. Right. Because yeah. most mamas would be making it all about themselves and rushing to every expert and all that kind of business. But you have the awareness to allow him to follow his own path. And that is such a grace. And I know for a fact, because I know from my son's friends who are now in their 50s, it, they notice. These other young men notice you and women. And it right. gives them an invitation yeah. to live their own life as they so choose. What a, yeah. Oh, thank you. I thank think, you. Thank you for I, that. Yes, and I th- but I think that's so very vitally important. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's living from heart, not human. And I've always yeah. lived from heart. Um, I can remember um, the kids would, you know, uh, their friends maybe would have trouble at home and they'd come to stay at our house or they'd get kicked mm-hmm. out by their parents or whatever, they'd come <laughs> to stay at our house. Mm-hmm. And um, the kids would always say, you don't need to worry about telling my mother anything. She knows everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was always that way. And um, and everybody would say, well, could I come over? And, and they would say, like, if we've got rice in the cupboard in a spare, uh, you know, area on the floor and a blanket, you're welcome, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. And mm-hmm. because we never had very much forever. I mean, my entire lifetime has been mm-hmm. that way because it's been in service. But it's always been enough. So I think the mm-hmm. idea is that do we, well, share this in closing, do we continue along the path of the human I am and what I always have to have? Or can we be that extra special sense of our essence and say, I'm willing to push it all behind and say, Mm -hmm. I am now free, Mm -hmm. and we become those that are, as I call it, I I mean, I can't even think of a word. I almost just see, like, this glitter flying in the air, and that's all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to be that? I see the same thing, by the way, from Mm -hmm. meditation. That's exactly what I got, the glitter, kind of the witness, the soul. Right. It's all sparkly. So thank you so much for this time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you, Dr. Kara, because I think that the idea is that even on your book, you know, Nightlight, I'll just share this real quick. I always get up at night, um, uh, who knows what or why, and pick up my iPhone, and I'm as mm-hmm. blind as a bat. I'm almost legally blind. And I'll pick up the phone, and I'll be typing away in Messenger on my phone, and I'll put it down, and I'll get up in the morning, and I'll read it, and I'll go, holy crap, who the heck wrote that? <laughs> so, uh-huh. you know, it's all com- uh-huh. it's all coming through these higher frequency energies and knowings, mm-hmm. and I'm going, ooh, okay then. So I think the mm-hmm. idea is that what we share today may be a higher frequency for some people, but it also, too, is important to be shared. And I thank you so much for sharing that your stories and your words in your book, Nightlight. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeanette. And I thank you for the time and the teaching I learned from you. And a day where I don't learn is a day unlived as far as I'm concerned. So thank you. I, I'm going to remember the bathtub, too. Yes. Oh, that works really well. Uh, one yeah. day I'll have to write down that physics problem. I bet you it'd be yes. a really good. It'll be a really good equation for. Uh, but it would have to be upper graduate level because it was so defined in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it does because it's so accessible. Yes. It's so accessible. So yeah. thank you again. Have a blessed day. Dr. You Kara, can you share joy with, Can mm-hmm. you share with the listeners how to find out more information about your work? Uh well I, I go to the website, TaraBarker.com, dot com and uh over time there will be more videos and so forth. There, I do a lot of keynote speaking, so I respond to invitations if they if it feels like it's a match. Um, 
Yeah, I do retreats. I'm getting ready to do a group, dream group online. I think I think that should do it. I ha- I've done two other books, but I think that Nightlight is the, it's definitely the most current, and it was one of those I was led to do it, and so I'm complete with that. But I'm available, you know. You can Very email awesome. me. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kara, for joining us mm-hmm. today. We Thank you thank for having you. us. Thank you. Okay. Like, God bless. If you'd like to find out more information about Dr. Kara Barker, again, the book is Nightlight, My Soul Calling, Body Listening, Heart Speaking. Please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to her website for more information. And it is truly about being able to say, I'm in awareness. Eyes wide open, face to the sun, breathe in. That's about all we are guaranteed. And even (laughs) that can be gone in a whisper of a day. Mm -hmm. So please do enjoy your day. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit Dr. Jeanette gallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.